Hi, my name is Kinshuk Pahare, and I'm the product manager for ASA. While corporate networks were once comprised of desktop computers with physical connection and predictable 9 to 5 traffic pattern, today's networks have become truly borderless. They provide 24 by 7 connectivity to end users who can be located anywhere in the world and access the network from a wide range of devices. The problem is while networks have evolved dramatically over the past se several years, network security have often failed to keep pace with these changes. Legacy network policies are still built using IP address to identify users. While this may have worked for uh, hardwired desktop computers, where each user could be associated with a single IP address in one physical location, user mobility and the array of devices used to access the network have caused the number of security policies to quickly balloon out of control. That's why Cisco has introduced identity-based firewall services. As the first installation of what will soon become the context of a security, identity-based firewall services enable security administrators to utilize the plain language names of users and user group in their policy definition. Here is how it works. Regardless of where the user is located or what device he is using to gain network access, he logs into his identity repository just as he does today. For purpose of this example, we'll use Active Directory. The Active Directory agent retrieves the user's IP information from the directory, and the ASA retrieves IP user mapping from the directory agent. The ASA then permits or denies the traffic based on the established policy. For example, let's say we have a medical center where access to a patient database application is required. John attempts to access the application, but because he's only an intern, by policy is not permitted access. When Mark attempts to access the same application, he is permitted access because he is a member of group doctor for whom the access is permitted when inside the corporate firewall. However, looking at the next rule in the policy table, Mark would be denied access to financial information based on the user identity. In this example, the administrator need only write a few rules for Mark which provides him access to patient records while denying him access to corporate financial resources. Separate policies are not required for each of these to account for when Mark is at home, at a medical conference, or on the Wi-Fi traveling across the building. Additional policies are also not required for account for his personal iPhone use to access his email, the iPad he used when checking for patients, or the laptop he uses in administrative meetings. Regardless of where he is and what device he is using, he is always Mark. Should a change ever be required, administrator would only need to look up mark and make the appropriate changes in the firewall rule table. There is no need to know and modify 20 different line items to account for every location or device, and there is no de danger of inadvertently breaking other policies by changing one. Workforce mobility, round-the-clock connectivity, and network access for broad range of devices that can be located anywhere in the world requires a fundamental shift in the way business think about and administrator network security. Cisco identity-based firewall services provide more granular control for secure access to the network regardless of user's physical location or device employed without adding undue complexity. For more information on Cisco identity firewall services, please visit www.cisco.com co ASA. Thank you.